Uh, okay. Kickstarters? Yeah, actually, we're going to start a new thing here um, called the oh. Indie Game Showcase. So one of the nice things that we've started doing is, I mean, obviously we have advertising for, for people that want advertising because um, we're a magazine. Uh, for well, one of the problems is that a lot of like indie developers and that kind of thing aren't able to afford it. So what we've done is we actually are um, giving them some free free-ish ad space on our actual website for their Kickstarters, and then we are going to showcase those Kickstarters throughout the month, every month. And this week we're going to be doing Desolate. Um, yes, I yeah. did the story on this one. The uh the website story for this. Ah, well, so. let me give you an average giant's line. Uh, before you watch this video, could you give us a, a quick synopsis of the game? Synopsis. Okay. Uh, so this is a um, essentially. I mean, I would consider it like a two D. Oh, I not consider it. It is a two D puzzle, uh, hand painted puzzle game. Um, but essentially, it's a narrative adventure game on um, where you play as a character. I don't think he has a name, or it's not listed at least. Um, and you're in a village in which shadowy like figures uh, take, you know, come to this village and essentially you as a player um, have to sacrifice your friends and family to escape these shadowy figures. Oh, wow. And um, upon your journey in escaping and falling through a cave and meeting these like tiny little cave like creatures that are afraid of you at first, but then you realize you have to like befriend these things to help them escape with you. And along this journey, you realize that you've made a horrible mistake. Sacrificing your friends and family, and now feel the, you know, the guilt, and you need to wow. go back to help them. And what's so, um, what I find so beautiful about this game is Elliot Cullis um, is making it very clear that this is kind of a personal thing for him. Um, now, whether it's directly related to something he's done or something in his life, he d he hasn't done that, and that's completely fine. Mm -hmm. But tackling this, you know, sense of regret and then having to atone for that and it um is really remarkable and personable and cool and when it's met with the like this almost um expressionistic painting style it's just like it's i find it very captivating mm -hmm. so um yeah that is desolate um okay. and so, yeah. i want to watch it now because that sounds really cool <laughs> I want it to play now because that sounds really <laughs> cool. And cue. <laughs> there we go. My name is Elliot Collis. I'm a Kiwi living in Japan and I've been working on Desolate for the last year now. Desolate is a 2D puzzle adventure game where you use the three core interactions of gesture, touch and speak to communicate with the inhabitants of the world. All of the music is done by New Zealand musician and lifelong friend Ben Tolich. In the beginning of the game, shadowy figures invade your village. You have to sacrifice your friends and family to escape. After you fall into a ravine under the desolate, there you encounter these little cave creatures who you have to befriend and help escape the caves which you become trapped in. You realise that you need to go back and correct the mistakes that you've made, but everything's changed. Your friends and family no longer trust you or want your help. You need to change, and you need to face your inner shadows and your inner self to do so. So throughout the game, the core mechanics never really change. You still use gesture, touch and speak and some light platforming elements to solve most of the puzzles. What does change is what's expected of you and how the core interactions change between the different inhabitants and the different settings in the environment. The puzzles and story in the game are crafted together in such a way that there is no dialogue. Everything that you want to say is told through your actions. An example of this is in the first act, you can call to your friends and they'll come a little closer, but this may mean that they, they get captured, which will in the caves, if you call to the little cave creatures, they'll get timid and scared and run away. 
So if you gesture to them, they'll come a little bit closer and you can work together to escape. Please check out the rewards below. There's a lot of great rewards, including a poster done by good friend Rickard Westman, which you can also get as a t-shirt. Plus there's handmade plush and an art book for the game and many more rewards. Thank you for checking out Desolate and I really hope you back the game. Thank you. Game Magazine is now available. Click here to subscribe to the June issue. Face bomb. <laughs> we need to take the dates out of that. <laughs> um, well, okay. I, I, I like it. I'm in. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, it sounds like it, it sounds very um, depressing. Yeah. Um, that seems to be, I think, is a, I find as a, um, not a theme that is done often in video games. Um, maybe because video games are an escape for people, so therefore they, you know, they play video games because they are depressed. I don't know. But, I mean, um, but this is the second Kickstarter I've seen for a game that's pretty much, I would say, geared towards the theme of depression. I don't know if you, I think we actually covered Song of Vigo, Song for Vigo. Do you remember that? Um, no. It was a point, it was a point click adventure game that, and it's like a central theme was depression oh um, yeah right yes yes I and do. this is the second kickstarter that i saw and it kind of reminded me of that last one um and i'm in full support of that i, I think that's a very tough thing to do especially in video games um and i also think it's really unique to see these one man band kind of developers kind of just come out and essentially you know throw that this is probably a problem for them and they're making they're going to make a game about it to help them cope with it. So mm -hmm. uh, I can't help but respect that and support that. Um, but yeah, I think, I mean, it's, I think it's a very simple um, premise and I like that it's ambiguous in terms of like names and places. It's just like, I, I really do think the game is best described as like an ex expressionistic painting. Like every still yeah. looks like it could just be, like you know, a painting like from the Scream or something like that. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really cool. I also think this game will do well uh, based on the fact that um, the these deeper meaning games that deal with more adult issues or taboo topics um, really benefit from the game as a medium because of the interactivity. Like you can watch a movie and feel sorry for the way something's going or you can relate to how a character is acting or feeling but with the game as a medium you're forced to to go through that yourself because you're the one in control mm -hmm. of uh, the experience so I think something like dealing with depression is not something that everybody wants to face but uh, with deeper meaning games like this it's something that people will definitely learn more about um, mm -hmm. and I'm sure it helps the developer cope but it'll probably end up helping a lot of the players cope oh too. definitely I mean I think it's a relatable concept like I mean you could put that in many things you know mm -hmm. doing something or hurting someone and just kind of you know never facing that problem so yeah I think it's. I, I think I even said in my story. I was just like, it's essentially exactly what you just said. It's. It's games like this or themes like this that I really do think push the medium forward. That like allows it to grow. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But uh, something we should touch on though for this, um, since you know this campaign is with us or you know working with us, um, you can get a subscription to Indie Game Magazine oh. by donating to this. Um, and I'm trying to find. It said uh, there, there's two things. Yeah, there's two things. Like thirty dollars or thirty New Zealand dollars, you get the uh, issue that this is going to be in, um, which is October's issue. Yeah. Or you can do the sixty New Zealand dollars, um, which is about is a little less than like fifty five American bucks, um, and you can get a year's uh, or twelve issue subscription to Indie Game Magazine. Yeah. As well as all the other rewards for the game. Like exactly. The, the subscription so, to IGM is really an awesome bonus. Yeah, I think it's. I think um, it's brilliant that we're working with these Kickstarters, too. Uh, I think this is. Yeah, it's a definitely a good way for us to do this. Uh, we've been ever since we started this newscast, we've been trying to think of a way to give back to the indie developer and the Kickstarter 
um, you know, scene kind of thing. So I think this was a very natural way for us to go, and I think it's going to help more than anything else. I know we did uh, just one Kickstarter last month. And um, we we did. We helped it actually back. And they actually got funded. So, you know, it's awesome. Was that Elysian Shadows? Yes, that was Elysian Shadows. Damn, Skippy. Yeah, yeah. That was a big one, too. Like, that was... Don't let that... I mean, to any of you developers out there, don't let that huge number... It was like $150,000 that they did. I mean, don't let that, you mm -hmm. know, freak you out because we will do... We'll, we will support any... Yeah. Actually, so. we have one Kickstarter today I want to look at because of the funding price. But we'll <laughs> it, get to that it, later. Okay. I mean, is it? Oh, no, it's not Loop. Because Loop, we just covered Loop. Uh, and that Kickstarter was only for 250 bucks or 250 pounds. Yeah, no, so. this one's called Phoenix Dawn, but we'll get uh, to Or no, Path, Pathologic, sorry. Pathologic. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This one earlier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is a big one. Um, but before that, we are going to look at a game called. Reassembly, which looks so neat, and I love the uh, the motto of this developer. And I know nothing about this one. Okay, so. we'll play it first and then chat about it after. Great. I'm hoping the players get a, a similar experience out of playing it that I get into building it at some level. Like that's really what I'm trying to create is this like experience of building something where where you. Um, you put your spaceship together and you have all these pieces and there's not like, you know, it's not it's not like a puzzle game. There's not like a, a best way to build a spaceship. There's like hundreds of good ways to build spaceships. Um, and so I really want people to like to really be creative with it and really like, you know, like like you would with Legos or something and just build whatever you want and build some cool thing. My name is Arthur Danskin. I am from Rhode Island, but I currently live in Los Angeles. I'm making a video game called Reassembly. You start out and you're you're just like oh I'm just making some triangles and then like pretty soon you're like thinking about every, you're thinking about the the world inside the game and uh, just this idea that you could build like some complicated thing out of these like little like colorful blo blocks and each block is like not interesting right it's just like a little a little brick or a little triangle or something but you put them all together and you get this amazing spaceship you're building this like incredible complex system and you put out of these like little simple parts and when you build something beautiful it, it might turn out to be functional and when you try to build something functional it often turns out to be beautiful you can bring this sort of like it, like dynamic like uh, mechanic of all these things that work together in this like amazing way the spaceships you build will show up in other people's games and uh, spaceships other people build will show up in your game so there's this kind of rich ecosystem you can build uh, ships with hundreds or thousands of blocks fairly quickly there's uh, uh, hundreds of other kinds of spaceships in the world, and there are several different factions. And they have um, they have they're they're kind of alive in the sense that many of the spaceships uh, can reproduce. They can produce more spaceships. There are sp space stations that can produce more spaceships. There are space plants that provide the bases for the kind of like uh, resource ecosystem within the game world. So you harvest, you know, the, the the spaceships harvest the resources from the plants. Then they build more spaceships and then they fight other kinds of spaceships for dominance and for control of resources. Uh, so you can get in these massive space battles. Like, we can easily have like 500 ships fighting all at the same time. So it's been really interesting to work with Peter on the music because, uh, you know, he's a musician. He really understands this beautiful, like, this, this way to create really inter interesting environment. There's kind of a, a range of emotions that the music goes through with things like, uh, things like loneliness, things like danger, all those are kind of incorporated into different tracks. There's no textures in the game, so I kind of contrasted that with using a lot of organic samples and things that you would normally find in, in real life. Reassembly is, is uh, drawn using a lot of vector graphics and a lot of particle effects. So there are actually no textures, uh, except for drawing text on the screen. It's just colored, colored polygons. By themselves, they're not interesting looking, but when you assemble a lot of them, you can really see the complexity and it, it, it can become very beautiful. Thank you very much for listening. We hope that you find our project interesting. And if you find it as interesting as we do, then uh, please support us. And we'll produce the best game we can for you. Thank you. So, reassembly. That game looks nuts. Yeah. Uh, a, a, an awesome kind of nuts. <laughs> for sure. Glad to know that sweet dudes wearing sweet glasses like that are making cool games. Yep. I, I'm going to throw on the IGM screen so I can actually back this right now so I don't... <laughs>
because that was really cool. Yeah, it was like a asteroid times eight thousand. It's like G met like it was like Geometry Wars and like all these other sweet cool shooter games. But that's awesome. Yeah, no, I'm I'm huge fan. I think it looks really cool. Um, I I what I like the most is his attention to um, not making the 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 best, like not having a meta game. So the, there's not like one way to make the best ships. There's hundreds of ways to make the best ship. I really like that. Yeah. Um, do, do, do. I and also th I love when a composer. Maybe this just comes from my audio background, but I love when a composer really puts his heart and soul into something because definitely music can be such an art. And oh. Uh, Oh, absolutely. Especially in games, too. I mean, yeah. or I mean, in general, I mean, period, yes. But it is, uh, I mean, music is such an important um, factor in, like, developing an atmosphere and a mood. And for me, it's like, usually music is what, uh, is, is the immediate nostalgia for me when I play a video game. Uh, like, if I start playing a game that I haven't played in years and I hear the music, that's, like, when that, like, wave of nostalgia pours through me. Like, ah, yes, like, the memories of playing this game. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also just great to hear that guy um, kind of think a little bit more in depth, uh, visuals, contrasting, audio, being like, there are no textures, so I'm going to, like, overload yeah, music. Yeah, that, that's with, what I loved. Yeah. When so. when they think about that, um, it goes through a range of emotions from like mm -hmm. loneliness to danger, and it it's like oh wow, things you would associate with space. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but it's yeah, I'm I'm big fan. I I loved how he was saying because there's no textures. I wanted to make it very much more organic, so that it it like the music mirrors the the game that way. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool though. Um, okay, so I backed that one for sure. Cause that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> Next, I want to talk about this pathologic. So, do you see the the pledge goal? Oh, it, uh, oh, I, I think I missed it. Yeah, cause snap. So they're asking for <laughs> two hundred fifty grand. They've got a month to go, and they're already at one hundred and fifty grand. Which is amazing. How long was this going? Is this um a thirty day kick? Like I. Well, no, was, no, no. I was no. about to say, I was like, <laughs> did they make that much? And I'm pretty sure this days? is a 40 at least. Okay. Um, but shall we check why they want to have such a big freaking price? <laughs> please, please. Some things never pass, they never age, never disappear. They're melted in the soil. They were here before us, and they will be here when we perish. Time has no power over them. Hello? Kickstarter? How are you today? Okay? Dizzy? Delirious. Look at me in the eye. Oh, come on. Get off his back. I I highly doubt that he's really aware of our predicament. This town is rapidly dying from plague. Are you willing to sacrifice yourself and everyone you love to stop it from spreading? Or maybe you'd rather risk worldwide pandemia to save this thing of beauty. Hello, speak up. Ah. Oh. Decisions like this lie beyond our common experience. And so we'll give you a tool to help you make them. Behavior simulator. Pathology is a story-driven survival adventure set in a doomed town consumed by plague. In this simulation, 
you will decide the town's fate. Find patient zero in hopes of crafting a vaccine. Pray to the local gods for a miracle to happen. Or simply run for your life. The choice is yours. First and foremost, Pathologic is a game about survival. But surviving here is about much more than just staying alive. Your health is important, so be prepared to scavenge, trade and fight to acquire the means for dealing with sickness. Pathologic isn't straightforward. There's no bad guy to kill. No obvious way to end. Your enemy, the sand plague, is intangible. Unlike hunger, thirst and fatigue are very, very real. Your body fights plague and its debilitating effects as the epidemic slowly devours the town district by district, poisoning the streets, food and people. And yet, the town is living and breathing, even though it's short of breath. Time flows mercilessly. Whatever you do, it all ends in 12 in-game days. As the plague devours the town, things change. An old stale chunk of bread can cost a fortune in a contaminated area, and yesterday's friend could shoot you in the back out of pain-driven madness. In Pathologic, nothing is accidental. Every place and every person has a story to tell. My chest seems to be filled with cotton. And there's never enough time to get everything done. You will have to choose. A lab scientist. A practicing surgeon. And a blessed girl. Present three different storylines. Each one with totally different possibilities. And each one leads you to an answer. But then you'll find that each answer is only a tiny fraction of the whole truth. Uh, or should we say... Uh... Uh, a single person's perspective. This makes Pathologic a huge 70 plus hour game. This is a massive, grim world with loads of lore, plot, characters, activities and things to be done. Which is why we need your help to do it. Fighting the Sand Plague alone is not an option. You will have to rely on the goodwill and skills of others in order to succeed. As much as we at Icepeak Lodge rely on your help and goodwill to break your pathologic. We're independent game designers who've been successfully making games for over 12 years. But we won't be able to pull this one off without your help, Kickstarter. We've done a lot of work. We created the world of pathologic. It took us almost three years to create all the scripts, plots and dialogues. Now, it's time to break into life. With your help, our three heroes could save the town. And who knows, along the way, you may acquire some skills which could come in very handy. So, pathologic. Actually, that's a good point with the dominoes. It's, it's interesting to find out what game developers actually use to make sure the, me the mechanics of their own game uh, are work or are balanced. Well, with the dominoes? Mm-hmm. What well, do you yeah. mean? Uh, well, I mean, like, say they have... Um, for the dominoes, I'm trying to think. They probably have some kind of mechanic about the trading um, uh, to see like what something should cost over something else. Ah, so I just thought they were just like, yeah, we're playing dominoes. <laughs> and, we're, and we're making the world of, you know, bath logic. I'm just, but, you know, obviously I know nothing. <laughs> it's, but, it's all good. 
But I do think that game looks like it could be really interesting and really it unique. Does. It does. Um, but, but, no. does it look like it could be two hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of interesting and unique? Well, that is good. I mean, they obviously, like I said, I think they had at least a couple bucks for the video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not unless that's there's just their office that that's what they work in. <laughs> They're, uh, they're practicing doctors. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're practicing dominoes and doctors. Yeah. <laughs> what better? What better two practices to make a game with? Um, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's that's a lot of money. But the game visually is pretty beautiful. Like, I mean, it looks very up to date. I mean, like very modern. Yep. So, um. But I don't really know what they presented in the video that would make it seem like it would cost two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Like no. they didn't really, they didn't really focus on the team. Nope. Behind it, they just kind of like, yeah, we've been doing this for twelve years, which is great. A lot of people have been doing it for twelve years and have asked for less. <laughs> um, and, uh, but and I mean, yeah, they touched on like you know it could offer up to seventy hours of gameplay. Um, I'm sure a lot of other games can do that. But, for, but for, 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 for less than $250,000. So uh, I think the game looks cool, and I think the concept and everything looks super sweet, but that's just uh, that's a lot. That's a lot of money, um, mm-hmm. especially when, once again, like I don't know who those... I didn't know their names. I didn't know who they were or what other games they worked on. Mm-hmm. So, um, but, yeah. It's interesting. I, I'm going to keep my eye on this one, especially because so many people seem to want to play it. Yes. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'm going to be really interested to see where this one goes. Yeah. I mean, and like PS4 and Xbox One, like that's those are huge. Uh, you don't like you don't always see new indie game Kickstarters immediately being like, yeah, this is what we're putting it on these you know these next gen new systems. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I guess like I guess uh, the game could easily cost that much. Definitely, I just don't think that the video. I think the video focused too much on trying to create this like. We're spooky and we're operating on you, atmosphere. Opposed to rather being like, this is why we need the money we need, and this is where we're putting it. Yeah. So, it was an interesting take on a video. I'll, I'll be interested to see how it works for them. No, oh, yeah, I was, I was. I mean, it was cool to see them do something more than just them sitting in chairs, being like, "This is what we. <laughs> this is this is what we do, and this is why we like it." Um, <laughs> so it was good to see like them put that that visual fun effort in. Yeah. Um. Unless that's what it is, like a hundred thousand dollars, they need the makeup for the costs of stuff they rented for the video. Oh man, we gotta That'd pay so all these. Funny. We gotta we gotta pay all these extras who are lying down on the ground. Oh yeah, we <laughs> only need. Saying. I mean, the game's pretty much made. We only need like five grand to finish it off. The rest <laughs> of it was just paying for this video. <laughs> Two hundred thousand dollars for these costumes. Can you believe it? <laughs> and for this kidney stone, or the hell that thing? Yeah, was. seriously. But okay. Okay. Um, Next up, I want to talk about Phoenix Dawn. We're already at about noon here, so I don't have too, too much time today. So we'll get through this one and then the next video, and then we'll see where we go from there. Okay. So Phoenix Dawn. Um, Phoenix Dawn. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hi Kickstarters, my name is Eric Trowbridge and I am the creator of Phoenix Dawn. Three months ago I left my full-time job to found Pixel, a new indie game studio here in Chicago. And today I'm really excited to introduce you our very first game, Phoenix Dawn. Phoenix Dawn was inspired by three of my favorite game worlds, uh, the Diablo series, Chrono Trigger, and the Final Fantasy series. And when I thought about what about those games I loved so much, there were three things that were in common. They all told great stories, they had great artwork, and all of them used technology in a really interesting way to uh, tell their stories better and to make their artwork better. So they used all the technology of their time to really, you know, enhance the game. And so when I was thinking about what kind of game I'd want to make for my first time, I really went back to that philosophy and said, you know what, I want to make a game that tells great art, has great story, and uses the technology of today to make a really great game experience. Phoenix Dawn is a role-playing adventure game uh, for iOS. You play as a young witch named Phoenix whose world has just come under attack by terrible evil. So she sets up on this journey to, to save it. And the heart of Phoenix Dawn really comes from her inexperience. You know, she's young, she doesn't know a lot of spells, and so I want you to really go along that journey with her. So the game's about uh, growth and discovery and experience and exploration. So as you play through the game, you'll use these experience points uh, to either level up your spells or you'll find magical ruins and, and artifacts that um, unlock new spells for you. But the fun part is a feature called Spell Alchemy, which is where you can use those experience points to uh, combine different spells to create new ones. And so when the game comes out, there's going to be like 15 spells kind of in the default skill tree. But based on the amount of combinations you can do, there's over a hundred different spell combinations, uh, which I think will make it really fun and really interesting. And I also think, you know, it brings an element of every time that you play Phoenix Dawn, it's going to be different. You know, there's some randomized worlds, but it's really up to you on how Phoenix learns, you know? So um, everyone's going to have a different Phoenix character, and I just think that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm kind of really excited to see where you take that element of the game. I spent the last three months building Phoenix Dawn and what you see here on this Kickstarter page, and I really want to make an awesome mobile game. When you think about mobile games, or what I think about when I hear of this, you know, the typical mobile game, I think about games that um, you know you play casually, or you're on your commute, or you're waiting for someone. You don't think about pulling out your iPhone or your iPad to play a game that you're going to be completely immersed in and love the story and love the characters, you know, and I really thought about the experience of those games before and I was like, you know what, I want to bring that kind of experience to the, the mobile platform. Um, today is a perfect time to do it. The technology for iPads and phones and mobile hardware is better than it ever has been. The software is better. The operating systems are better. So I think that now is a great time to really bring a full and immersive experience to those platforms. And I want to make a game that you want to pull it out and play for it at hours at a time. So that's really kind of the overarching goal. And there's so much that I want to talk to you about Phoenix on that I can't fit it all in this video. So I've included some more videos below. I've explained a lot of the concepts and screenshots and artwork. So take a look at that. Um, and see what you think. I'm really excited to introduce you to the world of Phoenix Dawn. And you know, the reason why I'm here is because my personal funds have, are just about to run out. Um, I've been working on it full time for the last three months and I would love to continue to build the world of Phoenix Dawn for the next six months. And so really the funds that I'm asking for is just to keep me alive for the next six months. It's just uh, so I can live off of pizza and Lunchables. Seriously, there's nothing glamorous about game development, especially at the indie level. Um, and so that's really what I'm going to use the funds for. And a small chunk of that's just going to go to miscellaneous company expenses, uh, paying our uh, my software licensing fees and our game. That you know those little side things. But um, I'm really excited about Phoenix Dawn. I hope you are too. Um, I'm really excited to learn more about who you are. And I'm going to be available for the next 30 days um, to answer any questions, comments, or concerns that you may have. Um, so let's engage in a conversation, and let's make together an awesome game for iOS. So I will see you down below.
Phoenix Dawn has now been renamed as the Spalcomy Simulator. <laughs> <laughs> I like that dude. I like that dude. I liked his game. Um, I like that he was showing it in early alpha because he wanted to show some gameplay, but you could see it wasn't there. Yeah, that was, and that was actually uh, just like one of my small concerns is that there was not a lot of gameplay to see, but yeah, um, but the video showed that he so clearly had a grasp of what it was that he was doing um, that and he seemed very confident in it, and uh, I like that guy. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm a big fan of that guy. <laughs> As well, it's so rare. This is gonna sound elitist <laughs> let it out it's so rare for me to find a mobile game that i'm actually excited about nowadays oh totally that's not pfft. dude you're you talking know to what like, i mean though no i that's trust me you're talking to like the, the pickiest douche when it comes to <laughs> mobile gaming like i like i admit that i like i 90 percent of the time we'll just pretty much ignore it um and that's really shameful of me but i just it's i can't i don't know I've, it's been very tough for me to get down with mobile gaming and mobile find games gaming, that I find are doing cool stuff. So, Mobile gaming is mirroring a part of our industry that I'm not very proud of, which was the industry crash in 1983, where because there was no copyright for a lot of like big-name IPs and video games, it was easy to make clones of them. Oh, yes. And, like, does this ring a bell to anybody? <laughs> Like even Farmville was a ripoff of another game. Oh yes. A lot of people not didn't know that before. Um, uh, Zynga, terrible company. Uh. <laughs> but, 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 this one looks awesome. I like the fact that he's he's chosen his medium because there is a market for it for sure. In a world that like this one, if it's made and it's made properly, like he can promise that he can make it. It's going to be a diamond in the rough. Yes. There, I mean, there are there are mobile games out there that I just think are genius and brilliant. I mean, to name a few, like there's obviously Monument Valley recently. Yeah. Um, but then there, for me, there's this, uh, there's Year Walk, which um, finally just came to um, Mac and PC. But for years, it was a mobile only game, and I find that game like it doesn't even matter that it's on mobile. I found it remarkable, and I loved it. Yeah. Um, there, there have been a few, uh, Galaxy on Fire one and two. For me, uh, really yes, big. those were good. But again, they got ported to PC because they graduated. Exactly. <laughs> so, but I mean, with that said, like there are definitely, I mean, like you know, there's of course going to be things on mobile that are doing sweet stuff. But in the midst of so much other nonsense and so much, God, I want to swear, but Flappy Bird, man, I've, there's just so much I can just take of anything bird related on game on, on mobile devices. Have Have you played Swing Copters yet? His new game. I don't know if I want to. Um, my best <laughs> is my best has been two, and I've oh, been playing wow. it for like three weeks. <laughs> so yeah, he can he, he he knows how to make difficult games. I'll give him that. I'll give him that. <laughs> I I think Flappy Bird exploded bigger than it should have, but yeah, yeah, we'll see yeah. how it goes. Oh, the next one. Okay, we have to watch this one. I'm really excited for it. Um, it's 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 a Canadian game because we oh. make better games in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have seen this one actually. Yes, do you um, see the? So it's backed. It's over two hundred percent backed now. So if you guys want it, it's got eighteen days to go, and you're looking at a pre-order with stretch goals right now. That being said, let's look at what would happen if the makers of Sword and Sorcery made Gauntlet. <laughs> wow, that's a really uh, that's a good combo.
And now people in chairs. <laughs> Moon Hunters is a mythology building role playing game for one to four players. Players work together to try and solve the mystery of the missing moon. You start your journey as a normal hero. Everybody knows that you're respected by your tribe, but you haven't really shown what kind of a person you are yet. When you're building your mythology, it's all about how future generations will remember you. Are you more of a brave hero? Or are you more of a trickster? We know most people will probably play the game single player, so the single player is going to be really good, but it's really best when friends can compete and enjoy something together. I think basically any game with friends is immediately more exciting and more fun. I think if we can find interesting ways to make players interact with each other and rely on each other during combat, we can really go in some interesting areas with, with Moon Hunters. So what really excites me about Moon Hunters is the myth generation system. I'm really excited to create a world that responds to you and give the opportunity for players to build their own story. I'm really excited about Moon Hunters, about the aesthetic of it, the look of it, because we're doing something I feel that hasn't been done much in games. Ancient Assyria's aesthetic is, like, is really interesting. It combines rounded, curvy elements with really strong and bold, uh, blocky elements. And the use of the, the, the material like stone just gives a, a lot of weight and history to the game. We were taking this really interesting approach, uh, sort of a bit like a JRPG approach, where the concept art is done in a watercolor style, and I would look at that to direct my pixel art characters. Uh, another really cool thing that we want to try out with uh, One Hunters is a dynamic lighting system. So we're going to take this sort of uh, uh, old school pixel art and then bring it into the modern day. We really want Moon Hunters to stand out as an atmospheric, um, almost hand-built feeling game, despite the fact that it's different every time. Last fall, we heard about the Square Enix Collective. When I talked to Square Enix, they really liked it. They liked the pixel art and they liked the ideas behind it. We really want as many people as possible to be able to see and enjoy Moon Hunters. We're hoping that after Square Enix reaches out to all of their fans, some of them will see Moon Hunters and, and think that that's a game they'd love to play. Square Enix isn't giving us any money, so we need help to be able to make the game as good as we want it to be. We want Moon Hunters to be the game we're dreaming of. We'd love to play a one to four player myth building role playing game, but it's not going to exist unless we make it. Moon Hunters can't be made without you. Please tell everyone you know. You can follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, and we'll be posting updates here regularly. So keep an eye on us and thank you for all of your support. <laughs> Thought I'd save the best for last. <laughs> So, yeah, that game's really... Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, I know. I know, I know. I think I actually saw that. Did we do a story on that or no? Um, That's a good question. I don't know if we did. I think I was just browsing through Kickstarter on one of my days. I think we should <laughs> probably let Vinny know, because I'm pretty sure Vinny would play this with us. Well, Vinny, well, then we can all just, you know... I know we have average giants, but you know when this comes out, the Sunday podcast is just going to be Moon Hunters Sunday. Oh my god! Any magazine. That would be so cool. <laughs> uh, because I want this game. Fifteen bucks for the game. Twenty bucks for the game with um, what's it called? Soundtrack. Soundtrack. Mm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the pixel art in that is uh, is pixel art done right? Like I think that's I think that's modern, very cool, very well done pixel art stuff and yeah. uh sorry i had it off there i had to back it ah <laughs> 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 uh, man well the music too the music mm. was just amazing super dreamy mm -hmm. and that boss when they revealed that oh boss, the it looks so cool yeah did they um they mentioned dynamic lighting i know that like there's like the sprite lamp which is a big deal uh for 2d based pixel art games right now yeah uh, but I don't know if they mentioned that they were using that or not, or if they were just, I don't know, maybe they're just doing their own thing. But I do like seeing that a lot of these people are putting dynamic lighting in their pixel art games because it just adds a totally different <laughs> dynamic. LAZ and Shadows, what? Um, <laughs> mm, uh <-huh. laughs> and yeah, but it looks, it makes these games, it like brings a whole new life to these games, uh, to this art style too. So I hope, and there it is, there's the, there's the gif of... That guy. Yeah, boss I, I thought I'd show it. It looks so cool. 
hard not to. Also, you could describe the game as Legend of Zelda meets Castle Crashers, or maybe King of Dragon Pass meets Gauntlet, which is a good way to do it. That reminded me of something completely tangential, though. Have you seen Hyrule Warriors? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. My wife well, is so excited for this game. I was like, oh, okay, Zelda Den is like Dynasty Warriors. Uh, I'll check it out. But she's so, so into it. She's, she's all aboard. She's yeah. getting it. Yeah. She's, is, doesn't it come out in a couple weeks? Pretty Two quick. Weeks? Pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll admit, like, I mean, I, I think it looks great. I think Dynasty Warriors is a great game. Um, but every time Nintendo kind of goes with their, you know, kind of third party approach, I got to be weary about it. Um, you couldn't but, possibly tell you talking about like other M. Uh, that uh, what are you talking about? That's that yeah. what is that? This, uh, what what is that game? Is that one of those uh, those Metroid? I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Not that one. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. But no, so seeing seeing High Roll Warriors, I was like, I want to really get excited about this, but I'm gonna wait patiently. Yeah. Yeah. So that's okay. This I, is I, this I've is totally it. off topic of. Indie game oh, stuff, totally. but, you, but you got Mario Kart 8. I got Mario Kart 8. I got Destiny coming out in two days, so um, I won't be available for the next six months. And I'll just be doing, <laughs> I'll just be doing the podcast by myself. Yep. And being uh, oh, so, uh, you know, I'll pop on in the podcast, but it's just going to be me silence. <laughs> yeah, or yelling at people in Destiny. Ah <laughs> uh, <laughs> man, but Mario Kart 8, man, I love that game. Wow, yeah, I have... It is a return to form for Mario Kart. I know, I know. I, I mean, I've, I've been playing them since the SNES, um, and there have been good ones, there have been bad ones, there have been okay ones, and this is definitely one of the best ones. I think I have not been excited for Mario Kart since Mario Kart DS. Ooh, are you ready, are you ready for me to shock you just a tad? Bring it on. Um, this is the first Mario Kart game I've ever owned. How do you like it? I well, like I said, like since I've gotten it, I got it about a week after its release, and I can't stop playing it. Yeah, it's, um, and it's the best multiplayer experience I've had with friends, like in the same room with me, as like yep. Smash Bros. So <laughs> I've been able to actually like communicate with my friends again, um, <laughs> which doesn't happen often, <laughs> but and let alone in the same room uh, playing Mario Kart. So. So, uh, so let's bring this back to indie game related stuff. Moon Hunters is going to be the next one. Yeah, it looks amazing. Um, and the multiplayer for this is really cool. The procedurally done storylines as well are going to give it some crazy replayability that you don't see, or lasting appeal, sorry. Crazy lasting appeal that you don't see in games like Borderlands that should have it. Cough, cough. Yes. Mm hmm. <laughs> What's the game? Indie games pushing the envelope. What we does, yo. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, do we have anything else, or was uh, Moon Hunters the game with a really sweet name and cool art style? The last one for the yeah, no, that, I thought that was a good uh, coup de gras. So coup de gras. Coup de gras. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I just want to put it out there: anybody that wants to back this um, and play with me, I will definitely do it. Let's do a YouTube series. Hunting a week series. Moon Hunters. <laughs> I love it. Weekly series, yeah, we'll stream it. Well, we'll just make a whole new show for it, obviously. Or I got a better idea. We can do Sunday podcast, but we'll just do it while playing this. Oh my god, yeah, get rid of so the we'll, Kickstarter videos. Exactly. Or yeah, we'll have. To, yeah, <laughs> screw that. <laughs> um, we'll do like split screen. We'll have new stories, and on the other screen will be Moon Hunters, and yes. it'll be like occasional silence, and then it'll be like, uh, game. Um, <laughs> Uh, some guy made <laughs> some guy made the creepiest thing I've ever seen on Unreal Four this week. Uh, you could look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we say something more. about that? Nah. Nah. Mm. Uh, Kurt, I know you're new to this podcast, but um, how should I put this? Um, we're done. This podcast was made to find the game to replace the podcast with, and and we've done that now. So this will be the last podcast ever. Thank you, everyone, oh. and goodbye. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, mm. <See> you later. <laughs> and my prophecy has been filled. <laughs> no, but seriously, we have. Uh, I mean, I, I kind of want to plug Average Giants. I'm not sure if it's tomorrow. Do it. I, do I it. think tomorrow 
Uh, we have two little games coming on. Um, one of them is called Assault Android Cactus, if anybody's heard of that. I haven't um, even heard of that. Uh, it's a huge, huge Steam game. Huge Steam game. They're really nice guys. Second time they've been on the show. Uh, and the other little game that we have is called Shovel Knight. Uh, I never heard of that one. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. It's it's a pretty obscure one. Um, uh, I had one to of look those. it up when, when they told me about it. But <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, in all seriousness, that's that's huge news. That is awesome. Yeah, so I'll be excited. What did you to do? To did you like bribe him a virtual boy and like You don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> uh some cotton candy. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, they've actually they've been excited to uh uh get on the show with us for a little while now. So we finally found some time where we all connected and looks like it's gonna be happening I think it's next week, it may be the one after. So we will wow. see. Wow. Yeah. Well, I don't think I have a shameless plug of my own. <laughs> um, let's see here. Um, I like coffee. <laughs> and if anybody wants to buy me some, <laughs> buy a magazine. <laughs> um, um, actually, yeah, I want to give uh, one more shout out to Desolate, guys. If you want to check it out, uh, Games with Deeper Meanings are going to be the future... <laughs> Of yes. a lot. It's going to be a come a new genre, I think. This whole deeper meaning game, which is good. It's very good. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. But make sure to check out their Kickstarter. Um, they're with us. So if you like the Indie Game Magazine, you want to give us some love, you want to give them some love, uh, make sure to check out the tier to back and get a full subscription to the Indie Game Magazine. Definitely. With that yeah. said, buy the magazine. Uh, support my coffee addiction. And... Yeah. Uh, Watch Andrew blabber about video games tomorrow night? Yeah. Monday? Tomorrow. Monday nights? Uh, yeah, Monday nights. Cool. All right, well, guys. That's it. Um, thanks for joining us, and we will see you all next week. And subscribe on YouTube, watch stuff, thanks. Do yeah. all that stuff. <laughs> Support how does, us. <laughs> how does Felicia Day put it? Sure, like, subscribe. Sure, like, subscribe us. <laughs> all right. We'll see uh, you guys next Sunday. time. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs>